245 and our next committee of the day is the Public Utilities and Green Committee. Again, those committee members are Freeman, McKittrick, Connor, Mosley, and Holland. We do have all committee members present except for Councilwoman Mosley. I'm sorry, Councilwoman Mosley is joining us right now um, and Councilwoman Holland will not be here today. So whenever you're ready, Mr. Chair. Great timing on Councilwoman Mosley. She walked in the door. So it is uh, 246. I'd like to call the uh, Public Utilities and Green Committee meeting to order. Uh, we already know that we have everyone in attendance with us. If I can have a motion to accept the minutes from the last meeting. So moved. Okay. And second. Okay, we have a motion and second. All in favor, let me know by saying aye. 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 aye thank you. Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. We have one item coming before us today. <clears throat> this is an ordinance authorizing the mayor or his designee to file an application for and, if awarded, accept and expend grant funding from the United States Department of Transportation, charging and queuing infrastructure grant opportunity and declaring an emergency. Who will we be hearing from? Chairman Freeman, this is Emily Collins for the administration. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. So this is a grant application for approximately $7 million for the charging and fueling infrastructure grant opportunity from the U.S. Department of Transportation. Uh, and this is due on May 30th. Uh, to give you a little bit of context for the application, it comes after Mayor Horgan launched his electric vehicle charging station task force on June 8th of last year, 2022, which was a 50 member task force that submitted its report on March 3rd of this year. Uh, the city also issued a request for proposals on March 3rd through uh, the Office of Integrated Development that was sent to approximately 60 known vendors who participated in the state's nation national electric vehicle infrastructure process, as well as we also sent it to the entire EV task force and, and put it out into the public realm with a press release. Uh, vendors were able to ask questions. They received responses on April 3rd of 2023, and their proposals were due on April 24th of this year. Uh, we received four very robust pr proposals. Um, we conducted interviews on May 8th and were prepared to move forward with an application uh, to support the goals that are outlined in that RFP. I'll spare you from reading the long list of goals in, in the RFP, uh, but I will tell you that it's uh, for the purpose of developing an expansive electric vehicle charging station network in Akron, where all households are within a 10 minute walk uh, and a 10, min uh, 10 minute walk of level two charging stations and a 10 minute drive of level three, known as DC fast charging stations uh, within Akron. I'll also note for you, uh, just because it's of interest, um, that the EV task force found that community emissions from the transportation sector is currently, without a doubt, Akron's largest contribution to greenhouse gas emissions and that this proposal will assist us in transitioning away from uh, that contribution. Um, you'll notice on the UCR that we had originally budgeted what I'll call a palatable match amount in this year's capital budget in anticipation of this grant request. But uh, since the notice of funding opportunity was released by DOT, we now know that the city match is unnecessary um, and will be fulfilled by a private entity within a public-private partnership. So one of the proposals uh, that we got in response to RFP, they will be responsible for the 20% match. So even though we budgeted for it, it's no longer necessary. Um, so with that, I will, and I'm happy to give you any level of detail that you're interested in, um, but the application's due on May 30th and we would really appreciate suspension of the rules. Thank you very much. Um, you talked, to, just for my, good, my own ignorance, talk about level two, level three. Can you say a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Level two charging stations are, so there are level one, level two, and level three charging stations. Uh, and they actually come in different kilowatts uh, as available. Um, but you can think of level one charging stations as essentially an outlet, a normal household outlet, and hooking up a vehicle into that, which is possible. It just takes a really, really long time to charge. 
Um, level two charging stations are known as charging stations that you would use either to top off, uh, so to speak, um, your, your charge, your battery, um, or if overnight you can charge it and have a full, t full tank, so to speak, or a full battery. So they're, they're usually the ones that are found in um, garages that are updated uh, for the purpose of um, having an electric vehicle in your household. Level three charging stations are known as DC fast chargers, and they can charge in 20 to 30 minutes and give you a full tank, so to speak, or a uh, full charge. And it depends on the range of your vehicle. Sometimes it's 100 miles on a single battery charge, uh, and sometimes it can be 300. So it just depends on the vehicle that you own. Does that help? Yes, yes, it does help. I, I, uh like to open up at this time any questions or comments we begin with committee members and I'll watch uh, oh I do not see a raised hands but I okay I do see a uh, Miss Amobian Councilwoman Amobian please I'm not on the committee is that okay Mr. Chair I did I did not see any other hands if I did I can okay. easily get back that's fine thank you um what is the charging station out there by Hilton Head? Do you know, um, Ms. Collins? The, the one, um, I'm sorry, where is it located? The one by Hilton, oh, I, I probably say Hilton here, I mean, you did. <laughs> Hilton <laughs> Hotel out there on Market Street across from Summit Mall. Yeah. Um, so I believe that's a level two. Uh, there's a DC fast charger down by Metro. Metro actually uh, owns it and uh, do a very, very nice job with it. Um, and okay. they, were, they were part of our task force, by the way. Yeah, somebody was charging their car the other night, uh -huh. and she indicated it takes about four hours or something, and she was plugged into that one. Yep. Um, are we, do we know how many we currently have around this area, and how many are we proposing through this grant? Yeah, we do know. Um, so there are approximately 20, and the trick to this grant is that this is for a publicly accessible charging network. So there are, there are about 20, uh, but they are not all publicly accessible. Some of them, for example, are at the hotels, um, and mm -hmm. you're expected to be someone who's staying at the hotel to be able to use them, right? Um, or otherwise engaged in the business at the hotel. Um, so we wouldn't call those publicly available. Um, so around 20 is what I'll, I'll say, uh, and it just depends on your definition of publicly accessible. The federal government has defined publicly accessible, so that is, you know, clearly what we're going after with this network. Um, and we asked, uh, you know, for an initial list of uh, locations uh, that we are going to curate with a private partner for the purpose of building out a network. Um, but about 130 locations across the city is eventually what we're hoping for. And that would fulfill the 10-minute ten, ten walk. Okay, let me ask you this. It, it sounds like, based on a report I heard last week, that electric vehicles are having mixed reviews in terms of some companies are pulling back and some are continuing to increase their um, volume. But um, I don't know, in light of that, are we think we're anticipating right in terms of the number that we are trying to establish? I completely agree with you that it depends on the day of the week what news is out there on electric vehicles and their success rates. But um, we do know that the federal government is very much that. trying to transition to them, right? Um, as a general matter. And uh, yeah. I think one of the best things that gives me uh, comfort in the proposals that we've been uh, reviewing and the ones that we intend to potentially move forward with is that they are dependent, each phase is dependent on utilization. So as long as they're being utilized to, uh, we're not sure what the percent is gonna be, but likely right around 7% then we'll move on to the next phase of build out. So, so it gives us the opportunity to make sure that it's working well before we would invest more money. I see, okay, thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. 
And as I understand, you said we, uh, are, we're going after how many million? Seven, approximately. Okay, and the total program is what, 700 million thereabouts? Uh, that's right, between two programs. Uh, so there's the okay. community program and the corridor program, and the uh, we have stations that will be in both. Okay, so this is, this is the community charging and fueling grant program. Right, and it has two, okay. two different pots of money within that program, uh, each which right. are $350 million, yes. Okay, okay, very good. All right, any other questions or comments? Mr. Chair, Councilwoman Mosley has her hand raised here in chambers. Okay, all right, thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, Emily, do you know if this funding is for current charging stations or will it be for pending ones may you know, be resurrected it, it's for future ones yeah future. Yes. okay and so when you talk about the task force do you know if fleet fast is part of that task force because i know they're building an ev station out there by goodyear on that circle on the eagle landing back there i don't recall that anyone f from uh that company was part of it no uh although it, it, we had 50 members as part of it and we made quite an effort to try to uh entice people to be on the task force um, with press releases and such, but I don't recall anyone from there. Okay. So would, would locations like Walgreens be so part there, of this? Because I know they have some charging right. stations. We do, they do, and they do that through their own corporate okay. ESG goals. Um, okay. So this does not in any way prevent build out at retail locations, and we fully expect that to happen, um, but not as part of the public network. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. thank you. And Ms. Collins, you, I have a little difficult time hearing in the online. There's, there is a match required from the city? So there is a match required, but we don't uh, think that we, the city, needs to provide that match. Because we're doing this through a public-private partnership, uh, the match can be provided by the private entity. Okay, okay, very, very good. Any other questions or comments? I do not want to miss anyone. Okay, so we're due here at the end of the month, so we could put it on consent, get it passed next week, or we could yeah. pass it by emergency tonight. I really prefer Mr. you. I'll make a motion for suspension of rules with a favorable report. Okay, motion for suspension of the rules and favorable report. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry, before we proceed, Mr. Mogan, please. I'm, I'm sorry, I just put my hand up. Um, Ms. Collins, can you help me understand this? Now, the public-private partnership means that we've already identified a partner for this project, or they will have to just put up the funds once once we put this. Is this going to go out to bid? So we put out an RFP uh, and to receive. We put it out to. Uh, about 60 known vendors um, who are interested in development in this area uh, and in the area of electric vehicle charging stations. Um, mm -hmm. We also put out a press release uh, and uh, I made sure that the entire electric vehicle task force uh, knew about it. So um, we received, the proposals were due on April 24th and we have received uh, responses. So. So, yes, we have interviewed them. We've gone through the process to uh, competitively choose a uh, vendor. And these are all individuals or companies that are in this work presently? Correct. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, very good. So, uh, was, was there a motion made? Yes, I did. Rule? Yes, I did. Yes, there was a motion for suspension of the rules, and I okay. believe there was a second. And there is a second. I'm going to apologize. I'm having a tough time hearing. Okay, all those in favor of uh, suspension of the rules and issuing a favor report this evening, please let me know by saying aye. 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 Are there, aye. Any, oppo are there any opposed? I can. Okay. Okay, very good. We will, uh, we will get that passed out this evening. Thank you so much, and I believe that is the end of our business at 3 p.m. Thank you so much.
Our next committee of the day will be the Budget and Finance Committee. Those committee members are Freeman, Amobian, Malik, Baylor, and Lombardo. We do have all committee members present whenever you're ready, Mr. Chair. Okay, we'll call to order the Budget and Finance Committee meeting. If uh, I could have a motion to accept the minutes from the last meeting. So move. That, yeah. I have a motion to second all in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, Mr. Right. Chairman, real quick, before, before we get started, uh, okay. earlier uh, at the uh, Planning and Economic Development Committee, we had the piece for the uh, Summit Medina Business Alliance. Uh, I kind of messed up. Uh, I thought that was going to be presented at Finance Committee, so we do have uh, Marianne Jasonowski here from the Summit Medina Business Alliance. And if I could, I'd like to just have her give her, she had a little presentation prepared and some handouts, so I'd like to have her present that here if we could. Very good. Good afternoon, council members. Thank you for having me here. My name is Marianne Jasonowski. I'm the director of the Small Business Development Center at Summit Medina Business Alliance, uh, to which the city of Akron has been a big part of our cash match in our organization. Um, we are funded through grant funding through the SBA, the Ohio Department of Development, as well as the city of Akron and county of Summit, city of Kent, and also Portage County Commissioners. We, in our program, we cover three separate counties. Um, of course, Akron, Summit, and then Medina and Portage counties. And the main things that we do is for entrepreneurs in the area, our small business community. We've been here for 17 years now as Summit Medina Business Alliance. So we've had a pretty good foothold, and we are located over at Bounce Innovation Hub the incubator that has changed, you know, names over the years. But what we do is that we uh, serve at no cost to our business clients who contact us. And what we do is we provide training and educational programs for those that wish to be pre-venture startup or existing businesses in the area. We are well vetted in the area. We work very closely with our community partners in collaboration with all of the entrepreneurship kind of programs in the area. And we've done that for the last 17 years. So people do know who we are. And we wanted to come by to just say thank you for all of the help that you've given us. And I thought I would, I do have some handouts maybe that I could, you know, hand off to, to someone uh, that you can I thought that it would be good for some of you to kind of hear a little bit of the statistics, even from as current as 2022 during our fiscal year there. But our small group of five, uh, we had met with 288 clients last year. And that's, that's a lot. Uh, we have, uh, I've gone outside to get some additional outside consultants to help us with the demand and the uh, impact that we made, economic impact that we made, I feel was significant. Uh, we had 11 business starts and out of our 20 businesses who reported impact, that's one of the things that a lot of companies don't really like to do, but just among 20 businesses who did share their intel, they had a capital infusion with the help that we'd given them through loans, counseling them on, on their oak owner equity injections, as well as outside investors, family, friends, and outside investors. And we were able to show 6.7 million in terms of the capital infusion that they've been able to contribute. And this is the successes of the businesses we're helping. Jobs created and retained were 423, and sales that were only reported by 12 businesses were just under 2 million. 
we also had a client who, even though that we work very uh, closely with our sister companies like Export Assistance Network, as well as Procurement Technical Assistance Center, one of our clients had indicated that they uh, also reported $5,500 in export sales out of that. But we have a separate unit that we send everyone else who actually needs to know how to go about exporting and so forth. One of the things I wanted to mention here, which I felt was extremely important, is how we work with our underserved community. Um, in the information that will be passed out to you, uh, you're going to see that women-owned businesses that we work with, we're at 50 percent of our clients that we see every year as being women-owned businesses. And if you compare that to the national average of small business development centers, we're running it spot on because they're at 51 percent. And this is representative of all SBDC centers throughout the nation. If we're looking at our own state of Ohio, that's represented at 53.7 percent. So as an organization located here in Akron, I think that uh, this has been a pretty good coverage of, of helping our women-owned businesses. As well, our minority small businesses, very proud of that number as well. Out of our own data, we've served 51% for our minority small businesses. And if you look at the national stats, that they're at 28%. And if you look at our Ohio stats at 51.7. So we are tracking very closely to what we're seeing out there. Veterans as well. Uh, we've got 9% of our clientele that are veteran owned. And nationally, that came in at 6%. And then locally here for our state of Ohio is 5.5%. So I wanted to share that with all of you that we are serving those markets out there. We are very, uh, collaborative with those organizations that support Elevate Akron and also a lot of our community uh, representatives that come together at Bounce uh, once every quarter to talk about how we are serving our community in that regard. Um, one of the main things that you might ask, what do people seem to be looking for for our help would be access to capital. In many, many cases, they're not ready yet. So we really are very good about helping them with their business development plans. And that could mean financial projections, you know, looking at their plan, uh, helping them build their own business plan. And this is very critical, especially for them to have any kind of chance of getting access to capital. Um, one of the things that was recommended is I was thinking it might be helpful to know some of the businesses that we do serve and some of these were allowed to mention by name um, because they were referrals from our city um, uh, partners Sam DeShazer from Community Economic Development and uh, also Summit County and so I, I brought along Jim Greedy who is one of our very well seasoned business advisors that's been with me for about 17 years there. And I thought maybe I'd ask him to do just little snippets, just to give you an idea of the quality and how we work with our companies. Because even if we're working with, uh, w which we like to work with uh, existing companies as well, they may be in the mode of, of being, you know, declining. Maybe they're having difficulty. And we get those calls from the SBA, we get those calls from the lenders so that we can help them try to turn these things around. So at this point, I would like to bring up Jim Grigge, introduce him to you, and. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Mary Ann just asked me to quickly thumbnail a couple of the businesses that we've worked with uh, over the past year or two. Uh, one of them, you might have heard of Ernie's Catering that opened in the Orangery. Um, she was part of Rubber City Match and Mortar. And uh, our role with her was to help her with her business plan and financial projections. 
Um, you might have heard of Portal West Coffee down on Merriman Road. Uh, Paul Ortiz came to me with a dream and said, how do I do this? And we helped him get through not only business planning and projections, but a lot of other startup issues as well. Uh, recently, I had a drywall company come to me. Uh, there was a larger drywall company in Akron where the principal was shutting it down to retire. And three or four of his employees decided that uh, they wanted to continue as drywallers and form a smaller, more boutique level drywall company with the support of the retiring owner. And to that end, we work with them to get them set up in business and get their financing in order. Uh, I have a uh, client that approached me about buying a local Lebanese lunch counter in Bodega. And we worked through uh, all the due diligence questions and business plan and projections for that. Uh, Sam DeShazer referred a company signature mold to us. Uh, the city had vacated a unused street behind the building for their expansion. And so I worked with them, or we worked with them again on planning business plans, we worked with them on projections, we worked with them getting utilities squared away so they could get the utility upgrades they needed. And uh, we now have an ongoing relationship where we probably just talk once a quarter about what's going on. And of course, right now, like many other companies, their biggest need is to find a good source of qualified employees. They, they have a real hard time finding qualified machinists. And if you've listened to the voice of small business in Akron lately, Finding good people is a real challenge, but we continue to work with that. Uh, uh, another company came to us, Western Reserve Control. Uh, they were looking to relocate. They thought that the major tenant in their current in their current building was going to push them out. They didn't want to wait until the last minute, so we helped them with relocation planning. And now they've asked for our assistance in doing some marketing. Uh, one of my favorite stories, this is from a couple of years ago, um, we're for the local company that does uh, lubricants, oils, and that kind of thing. And uh, I had an opportunity to present at Hudson Library at one of their business presentations. And the CEO's father was there, and he liked what I had to say. So uh, he said, I'm going to bring my son in to see you. I said, OK, I'm glad to see him. So he literally dragged his son in. I, the body language almost suggested he pulled him in by the ear. Uh, anyhow, uh, we are now a pretty close consult have a pretty close consulting relationship with the son. Anytime he wants to run and try a new idea or a new project, he runs it by us. Most recently, uh, we're working with Downtown Akron Partnership and the Akron Resiliency Fund on. Uh, Rubber City Comics, if you're familiar with them, and helping them move their business forward. So those are just a few of the examples. We could go on and on, obviously, but I know you guys have plenty to do. But just a few examples of what we do and how we help. Thank you. One of the things that uh, we do best is we, once we uh, get a client registered for counseling, they know they can come and see us. They're never deleted from our records. And often we do get people back after a couple of years. Or if they're looking to expand their business and they're looking for expansion loan to get their financials in order so that they can obtain success in making that happen. We do one-on-one -on -one confidential counseling with these individuals. And even when I go to board meetings, I can't really mention who exactly we're working with but a lot of times we like to give a highlight of those that we are working with when we meet. And we, uh, if, if I always tell my board members, if you see anything written in there that you feel looks like somebody you're already working with, we will get the client's permission in order to speak to you about them. And so that's worked out beautifully. But we do do both of those things very well. And of course, if the needs of that client is beyond what we can offer in our team of experts. We will go outside the company. We have a plethora of resources that we can bring to the table and manage those individuals through the system. So, thank you.
And I suppose if anyone <clears throat> has any questions, uh, go ahead and, and uh, ask. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mallory. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you so much for the presentation. It's wonderful to hear. And um, I can tell you that your work is making a huge impact. I was in oh. Portal West yesterday, and it was oh, packed. Oh. And every Excellent. time I go in there, it's packed. Excellent. And um, I, I'm sure Mr. Ortiz is grateful, and the whole community is grateful. So really appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to present today. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for all you're doing. And uh, Mr. Pricker, thank you for interrupting me there at the beginning so we could hear that. I'm, I'm, no, I'm glad that I'm glad that we got to hear that. Yeah. So did you, did that, uh, in that committee, did they go ahead and pass that legislation? I think, they, I think they put it on consent. Uh, okay, you're so, good. Yeah. And again, my apologies because I, I didn't know why I assumed it was coming to budget and finance, but uh, you know, it ended up going. No, that's, that, that, no, that's fine. That was good for us to hear. M Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I think there's a comment from uh, Councilman Mobian. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mobian. Please, thank you. That's okay. Um, I too would like to thank the group for the presentation. Uh, I firmly believe that those things that are monitored uh, get done. So it's nice to hear that you're tracking the underserved groups because we've been talking about that for a number of years now. Exactly. Um, in terms of those women and, and those women groups, are you finding, are you going to monitor them? I, I'm assuming that they stay with you for a period of time and then they kind of fly on. They do. Are you planning to follow them for a period of time just to see how they're doing? And at any time, can they come back to you for support? Um, yes. When we are working with each individual client that we see, they know that our door is open to them. And we encourage them, you know, like you just said, once you help them get that loan, that startup loan, and they've stepped off the curb and they're out there, you know, working their business, very often we don't hear back, of, back from them for a good while and uh, until they need something else or they want to run something by us. Right now, we are like a staff of five, and that includes an admin, myself as director, and three certified business advisors on the team. It's really kind of hard. We, we are blessed with uh, the amount of calls we get every day, and those people signing up for counseling, even through the state, to get to, to see us. So maybe in time, we might be able to look at that capacity. I agree with you. I would love to be able to look back even three to four years out and have a staff member be able to call back on these individuals, especially those two that have given us those impact reports that we ask for every year. Uh, that would be great, but definitely that would be so helpful because a lot of people may feel they can't or they're embarrassed, but that's the time where they need to give us a call. Yeah. Do you collaborate at all with the Urban League? We work uh, closely with the Urban League. They do a lot for our clients who want to become certified in a lot of different areas. And matter of fact, I just, they were working on their proposal this year, and I always give them a letter of support with whatever we're doing. So we kind of give each other that connection. And we j just recently, too, we did a round table uh, where they were uh, there along with us in terms of talking about how can we better serve uh, the underserved. Yeah. Now, thank you very much, because I, I went to the Urban League not long ago and met with their staff, and they're doing some great things. And they really are. They even have some Very financial active. support. Yes, they do. We some of those um, mm -hmm. you know, contractors and people that they're helping to get on their feet. So, no, it's good to, to hear that we're making some progress in this area. So thank you very much for your work. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Congratulations on your numbers that you presented, too. It uh, sounds like some of the other SBDCs could maybe use some of your secret sauce. So, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will, uh, we will proceed with uh, items that we have before us at this time. And uh, here. Okay, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Viviano if. Uh, 
we could just go straight to, uh, okay, item number one, here we go. We have an ordinance authorizing the director of finance or his designee to enter into a contract of contracts without the formality of publicly advertising for bids with AT&T for the provision of telephone services for the city's uh, VOIP phone system and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So th this is uh, a renewal agreement for the city's, basically our landline phone system, our, our voice over IP phone system. So we currently have two separate agreements. One is for the, the line itself, and then one is for what's called managed internet services. Those uh, contracts have both expired, so we are renewing with AT&T for both of those services. Uh, the pricing for this is all through like a national, national consortium, uh, so we get that pricing on it. Uh, so again, it's basically for a renewal of the, kind of the core of our, our landline phone system. Uh, if there's any questions, we do have Malcolm Valentine from our communications division here as well. All right, any, any questions or comments from committee members or other council members? And I see Ms. Amogian's hand, please. Thank you, sir. How well is the system working for the city? So, the system is working good. We are uh, this year finally going to get completely off of our old analog system and fully on to our IP phone system. But the system itself is working well. And these here are just a means of getting our dial tone over the internet as, as opposed to, you know, their SIP trunks as opposed to PRIs to supply that dial tone that we use throughout the city. It's as if I understand all of that, but just want to know, because I know that, <laughs> I know that the system has worked for some people and not so well for others. I wasn't sure how it was working for the city. Um, don't fully understand how it works, but I've heard of the system before. Yeah, so it's a, it's a Cisco VoIP system, and um, if we could get completely onto that system and not be working off of two systems, I think sometimes when people say things don't work, they're probably talking about the old antiquated system that we're still trying to keep working. Any other questions or comments? Sarah, am I missing anyone? I don't see any hands raised here in chambers. Uh, Mr. Frickery, is consent okay on this? Or? Uh, consent should be fine, yes. Okay, do I have a motion for consent? Motion for consent. Second. Second. And second, all in favor of the you know by saying aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Next item is Northern Authorizing the Director of Finance or his designee after the uh, Ohio Auditors Ohio Auditor State's Office facilitated request for proposal. Enter into a contract and contracts with Ray Associates Incorporated for audit engagement services for the city of Akron and the Jets for certain sections. 117.11 and 117.115 of the Ohio Revised Code for this period is January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2026, and declaring an emergency. Hi, thank you. I'll be taking this one. So, um, in accordance to the Ohio Revised Code, these two sections uh, establish that all municipalities in the state are required to have an annual audit and if the the other part of it is if the auditor or state's office elects to not partake in it for any reason how the process is facilitated for a uh, independent auditor to be established so late last year we went through a, a rfp process with the state uh, of ohio um, there was four responses and um, Steve, myself, and a few others went down to Canton to meet with the Auditor of State's Office to see these proposals. Um, interestingly, the Auditor of State gets 95% of the scoring rates, and we only get 5%. So this is a combination of, you know, uh, a collaborative effort between them and us, and Rain Associates is best both for the price and um, the amount of services that we're requesting in this time frame. I'd be happy to take any questions. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mallet, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wheeler. Um, so th this auditor 
this auditing company will cover all, all of the jets? Yes. So uh, interestingly, <coughs> the city and each of the four di jet districts are their own separate audits. Okay. And we don't need the assent of any of the other communities? No. Steve, as the tax administrator for the JEDs, is solely responsible for that in the eyes of the state. Okay. Fascinating. Thank you. Questions are coming up. They have ways, so they have, they have multiple offices. We deal with Group Out Act. And I know, I, I think that, like, I deal with folks down in New Philadelphia. It's, it's a local office that we're dealing with. We deal with a combination of offices throughout the state, primarily Medina and one out of Columbus. Um, okay. There could be others as well, though. Okay. Any other questions or comments? And again, this may be on depending upon you for eyes. There are no hands raised okay. here in chambers. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bricker, what would be a pleasure? Or Mr. Weaver, what would be a pleasure? Consent should be fine for this. Okay. A motion for consent. Motion for consent. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor of placing this item on the consent agenda, please let me know by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, our next item is an ordinance authorizing the director of finance or his designee to enter into a contract or contracts for the City of Akron to provide $250,000 over a two year period to support the Sojourner Truth Plaza project in downtown Akron and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Gertrude Rome's on behalf of the administration. Uh, this is a project that I, I think will truly be a destination for the greater Akron area. With us today is Andre Campbell from the United Way. Andre serves as the Chief Diversity Officer and is going to provide us an update of the project and uh, give us a realistic timeline of the completion. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I don't think that microphone is on. Can you all hear me now? Yeah. Perfect. Sorry about that. Um, thank you all for having me here today. Um, also, thank you all for your time and service to our community. So um, to talk about our Sojourner Truth project. So as you see up the road at our United Way office, uh, we're currently in construction. So we're about maybe eight and a half months in. Uh, what's going to be um, a public plaza that's in uh, commemoration in honor of Mr. Journey Truth. And so um, you all are probably familiar that um, Mr. Journey Truth gave her a you know, woman's speech sort of in the vicinity of where uh, this plaza is going to be. And so the Journey Truth Plaza is actually going to be the result of a community wide effort of among different civic and leaders throughout our greater Akron community. And so um, with her presence and her speech back in 1851, uh, this is going to be a space for remembrance of um, who she was, um, reflection, and also educational opportunities as well. Um, there's going to be a floral motif that's in design to really give reverence to her family's roots from Ghana. And there's going to be a life-size sculpture of Miss Truth that will take place and that will be visible at our plaza. If I remember correctly, uh, Miss Truth was about six feet. And so there's going to be a live, um, I would say, real life-size statue of uh, Miss Truth in that, in that space. And so. Because that the plaza is going to be within United Way's um, premises, uh, the day-to-day -day operations will be owned by our organization. However, um, the true vision and the um, fulfillment of this plaza is really a collective effort and vision from the design and partnership with the Summit Suffrage Commission, um, Centennial Committee, Centennial Committee, excuse me, um, as well as Summit Metro Parks. That's been really helping lead the design of what this plaza is going to look like and also the National Trust of Historic Preservation. And so um, we are aiming for, if everything works well, uh, this plaza to be complete by the end of the summer or going into the fall of 2023. Um, out of the $2.4 million capital um, funds that will help us bring this uh, project to its fulfillment, uh, we are asking the city, as was mentioned, for $250,000, which will cover us for a two-year period um, that will help with the construction of the plaza. So through this two-year period, there's going to be generally two phases to this. And so the first phase is really helping us um, continue the work around the construction and the aesthetics behind that. 
And then the second part of the phase, which would be a, a separate effort, um, is really going to go more into um, what the internal design and space and programming is going to look like uh, for both uh, people that are within the Akron community as well as people from the outside um, of our community. And so um, we do have additional sponsors that, that's a part of this um, effort as well. But I'll pause there if there's any clarifying questions or thoughts you all have. So I, know, I know right off the bat, uh, before I forget, I have received requests from uh, uh, Ms. Mosley. She'd like her name placed on that, so Sarah, if you can kind of help me uh, with that this evening. And then also, would we be able to see a list of the other partners that are involved with you in the project as well? Yep, absolutely. So if you go, um, and we can send you additional information, but there is a um, website currently that's generated through uh, the Sojourner Truth Statue Project that will show the different funders that have uh, submitted finances to the project. Um, we as United Way are also helping with that effort as well. The Akron Community Foundation's been very instrumental in terms of bringing in additional resources as well. Um, so yes, we can we can provide that um, if needed. Wonderful. It's nice to have those so we know who to thank. So thank you for that. Yep. Uh, questions or comments? Ms. Amobi and I, oh, let me come to uh, Ms. Mosley first, and then uh, Ms. Amobi, I'll come to you. Yes, Tara? Um, thank you, um, Chairman Freeman. Um, just a few questions um, yep. about the uh, the footprint because it belongs to United Way, will it always be open to the public or is it gonna be something that's gated? Um, my thoughts and understanding is that it will be 100% open and public. And so there will be hopefully opportunities for other community members, um, organizations that would want to have any type of gathering in that space, whether it's you know outdoor events that they wanna plan or if it's just a general meeting space, that will completely be open to public. Uh, we will help in terms of the community gate engagement and outreach component of it. Um, but yes, this will be completely open to public. There won't there won't be any gated um, or you know inaccessible parts of this actual plaza. Okay, and, and my final question is: Will will there be an educational component? Say, if the schools want to take the kids there for a field trip, will there be someone on site to? Other than it just being a plaza and the statue, will there be an educational component so um, APS students would know why this plaza exists? Yes, yeah, that will be part of the phase two. And so currently, the uh, Summit uh, Suffrage Committee is currently working with Akron Public Schools to help design and create what that curriculum will look like. I think if, if our process um, goes as planned, we're, we're hoping that as United Way, uh, we can provide additional support in terms of staff that can really help be that conduit between um, the education components and people in the community. But yes, there will certainly be that extra part, but that will take place in that second phase. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Mr. Chair, you're muted. Pardon me, I'll come to Ms. Amobi and then I'll come to Mr. Mouth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I can only tell you that those of us uh, in this community that are fully aware of what's going on with this project are extremely excited about this. Uh, my sorority sister, just in full disclosure, uh, Tawana, Tawana, Tawana Mullins, is the chairperson, I believe, of the Suffrage Commission or whatever you refer to as yes. um, her group. And my sorority has is a contributor. We've collected our 20, I think it's $26,000. And so have our name enshrined on the um, statue, wherever it's gonna be in the plaza. Uh, we were extremely excited about this. Uh, our local sculptor, Mr. Woodrow Nash, has, uh, is going to do the sculpting. Am I correct, sir, in saying that? Yes, is that is correct. Yeah, that yeah. was my oversight. I meant to mention that with Mr. Rudolph yeah. Nash, yep. I, um, when I pass by the area, I see they're hard at work. So we are seeing this come to fruition. Um, so there are a number of other group, Greek organizations that are contributing and want their names on it. I certainly want my name on this legislation as well, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, we are very excited and 
we know the history of uh, Sojourner Truth given her speech at this particular location and um, it is quite fitting for it to be in Akron at this place and uh, I'm just really overjoyed that we are actually will live to see it happen. The, the question I have, and I know you talked about the educational component, um, would there be a way for people to give donations so that we can continue to keep this um, plaza nice, clean, and in good shape, and and to continue to add things and features to it? I know that, I don't know, it's, there will be a part maybe that's enclosed, I'm not sure all the layout, I've seen it, but I don't recall that. So, mm -hmm. just curious as to how we want to preserve it and, and would there be a, a fund to do that? Absolutely, that's a great question. And so, um, to build off your first point, um, Ms. Mullis has been extremely instrumental in the fulfillment of this project. I feel like we as an organization is ex extremely blessed to be able to sit in a space and help, you know, whichever way we can. Um, and certainly there's definitely room and opportunities for um, individuals to continue to donate, um, not only as the, the project uh, leads up to being completed, the plaza leads up to being completed, but also uh, to your, your point of um, in the future as well. And so um, we're currently working with the Summit um, Suffrage Committee to talk about what that will look like on our end. It seems like the process that is currently in place now where people have that space to give individually will hopefully remain intact. And that I will say also going back to that second phase of the, um, of the plaza is the uh, general operations of upkeep of the space um, that as we as United Way will be looking to really help uh, provide a heavy lift to make sure that it maintains its pristine uh, image. I will say that um, just based off of preliminary how things have been created now, I'm not sure how familiar you are with um, the layout of what our building looks like already. So currently, um, or in the past, you would come in through the parking lot where the APS uh, administration building used to be. And um, there was a part that you kind of had to go down a step and then into um, the back of our building as well as, you know, if you go around that alley, it was sort of like some connecting steps. Um, in this point of the construction plaza, uh, um, updates, they're actually um, in the process of just about completing what's going to be an ADA uh, compliant ramp that you no longer now have to take any type of steps. You, you park in the back of the building and then you could just swing all the way down to the bottom uh, where the plaza is going to be. And so, um, yeah, there's definitely intentionality of not only how do we create this and how do we partner with others to make it come to fruition, we also know the responsibility, especially with it being in our space, uh, to provide the general upkeep. And yes, we'll certainly be uh, finding ways and spaces to continue to bring in individual as well as organizational um, support in that process. Thank you, Mr. Mallet. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to thank you, Mr. Campbell, and everyone at United Way and involved in this project. As my colleague, Ms. Mobian said, I know there are a lot of partners that have made sure that this will happen. Um, it's a long-standing priority for the community and it's really exciting to see, so I'm glad the city can partner in it. Um, I'm glad to hear about the ramp because I was I had my head down looking at my phone today and I almost walked straight into the fence that is there cutting off the, the access to the construction site today. Mm -hmm. uh, but really excited about this project. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mr. I'm, I'm curious, is there any, has consideration been given to any kind of endowment specifically for this project just to, you know, maintain in perpetuity uh, your work and, and what's happening here? Yes, we are, um, we're currently working with the um, National Trust of Historic uh, Preservation in terms of what the long-term um, financial um, processes will look like. And so um, with this being one that we will continue to operate, I think we're trying to ensure that this can truly be one that will remain capital and not so much operational. But that's definitely a conversation that, you know, we've been advancing with the National Trust and it sounds like there's appetite for them to support us with that. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions or comments? 
Okay, Mr. Picker, what would be your pleasure on this? Uh, consent is fine. So moved. Okay, then. Good motion for consent. And uh, second? Second. Okay. All in favor, please let me know by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you so much for appearing before us today. And, you know, thank you for your work and uh, uh, posterity. You know, everybody profits here. So thank you so very, very much. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Okay, next we're going to uh, item number four. Ordinance authorizing the Director of Finance or his designee to enter into a contract or contracts with the Summit County Historical Society. The city of Akron to provide $100,000 in financial assistance for improvements to the John Brown House campus and declaring an emergency. Uh, thank you, Chair. It just happens to be City of Akron Civic Lesson Day. Uh, presenting on this uh, legislation is Leanne Hepner. Leanne is with the Summit County Historical Society and serves as their president and CEO. Good afternoon, and thank you. Thank you. Sorry, good afternoon, and thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. Um, you will be given booklets about John Brown. John Brown was, um, the, as Dave Lieberth would say, the most consequential person to live in Akron, and he actually lived most of his life in Akron and Summit County, um, including Hudson and Richfield. In 1859, he led a small group of individuals um, on a raid in Harper's Ferry to try to end slavery in the United States. He was captured and he was hanged, and after that, um, the Civil War shortly ensued. The Smithsonian records the Civil War era beginning with Brown's raid and ending with Lincoln's assassination. I just wanted to provide that as historical context of the importance of this individual. For the last 10 years, the Summit County Historical Society has been working to upgrade the property where he rented a house between 1844 and 1854. Um, we have gathered and um, completed $1.2 million um, for that, and this is our first um, opportunity to potentially receive funding from the city for that. Um, the city does help us um, on our operating. With that uh, $1.2 million, we completely um, made the building warm, safe, and dry, which included um, replacing the siding because it was damaged to an extent it could not be repaired. Um, it was pointed and the foundations were secure. We did brand new HVAC and lighting to assist with those individuals that have issues with heat and light. And we also made it ADA accessible, putting in an ADA ramp, an ADA bathroom, and a parking lot so we can actually host events during January for Martin Luther King Day, which we did for the first time this year, and also in February for Black History Month, because previously, if it rained or snowed, there was no place to park except for in the grass and people would get stuck. So we are asking you to please help us to continue this project. We're not finished. If you go over, it looks really nice until you see the barn. And um, that structure needs a lot of work. We are currently engaged with the architects to um, look at what the next phases for that can be. And we're um, in this process with the National Park Service with their Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. We are looking to do brand new steps on the front porch because of after all the attendance in the last 10 years, the steps have shown themselves to not be secure and we need hand railing to make it um, as secure for those people taking the steps. We also need signage. Um, even my own dad who drove up from Southern Ohio said, Leanne, how did I know how to get into that parking lot? So we need signs to welcome people to let them know that we're there. And we also um, have a voting booth. And um, they paved a spot for that um, voting booth or they concreted a section so that voting booth can become a future interpretive site. And that's very important to us. And um, we just last week signed an agreement to work um, with Akron Public Schools for their career and um, services. And um, I'm hoping that that can be a future project for them. I'm happy to answer any questions, but I just want to let you say that it's become a location for the neighborhood. With our Free Farm Fridays, June, July, and August, the neighborhood kids are able to be there. More people are using that site, and I hope that you'll think of an opportunity to bring more people to learn about this individual that was important, not just in our community, but nationally. Thank you. Uh, questions have come to Ms. Amobia first. I just wanted to say that I was there for an event not long ago, and it, the place is absolutely beautiful. I was kind of ashamed to say that I hadn't been there before, but 
I was able to make it, and they've done some tremendous work, and certainly uh, support this legislation. Would love to have my name added, and um, I, I, you know, I think it's a very worthwhile project. And, and thank you very much for the work you've done, and and thank you, thank you for historical information you provided. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Uh, I see Mr. Neal's hand. Mr. Neal, you're muted. Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. I, 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 got, everything. I got everything working now. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, John Brown Home is not in my ward, but it's uh, just right across the street. And I'm appreciative of everything that they do and the historical society, they're making themselves even more intentional to engage the community and become great community partners. So I'm, I'm thankful for the enrichment that they bring. And uh, uh, I don't know if this is gonna, if, if how council feels as a whole, but I'd love to have my name added to this piece, sir, as well as the last one, if that's okay. Excellent. And I think, Ms. Bibiana, you're making note of all that, so. Uh, yes. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Neal. Other questions or comments? Mr. Chair, Councilman Malik has his hand raised. Okay, thank you. Councilman Malik. Uh, Mr. Freeman, uh, if there aren't any other comments, we'd like to make a motion for suspension of the rules with a favorable report. We have a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, issue a favorable report passes by suspension of the rules. All in favor, please let me know by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you so much for your work. Uh, this is a gem that, you know, another city in America has John Brown's home. And uh, realizing this is a real epicenter for uh, a lot of things that happened years ago. We appreciate your work as well, so thank you. Thank you very much, and I just um, don't want to re be remiss to give you a heads up that on June 19th, for Juneteenth, we will be hosting a free walk up to the John Brown Monument. We'll start at the back um, of the Akron Zoo at four o'clock, and at five o'clock, we'll have our um, Ju Juneteenth community talk back that was organized by Reva Golden and Gina K. Maddox about um, John Brown and Alice. You're inv invited, thank you. Okay, thank you so very, very much. All right, next we have, uh, finally, last piece here is an ordinance authorizing the director of finance for his designee to enter into a contract or contracts without the formality of publicly advertising permits with Power Engineers Incorporated for the design and implementation of a new special assessments application using the city's existing GIS platform and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So as the legislation states, this is, uh, we're basically replacing our, uh, our Oracle-based assessments application. Uh, we started that process last year. Uh, we didn't know exactly how much uh, money it was gonna cost to do that. So we've already spent about $140,000. Uh, this should finish that project. So it was a little bit more complicated than we thought. Uh, but the good news is that with this application, because it's in our existing GIS platform, we will not have any annual maintenance for this specific application. It's, it's part of the package that we're already paying for. So our GIS platform is what we use. The engineering bureau uses, in fact, all our departments really use it. It's that mapping GIS application that's available to the entire city. So we're building this assessments application on that platform. Uh, we're using Power Engineers because they uh, were the, uh, the firm that designed our city works or, or implemented our city work system. And there is an integration between city works and this assessments application. Thank you. I would like to open it up for any questions. And if you understood all, I understand a part of it, but wish I understood all of it. Uh, I do know that there's been a lot of work going in on this for quite a bit of time. It's nice to see some things really come to completion and, and fruition. Here. So, questions or comments? Looking for hands. 
I do not. S okay, Mr. Malik, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, same as last time. Uh, if there aren't any other comments, we'd like to make a motion for suspension of the rules of the favorable report. Second. We have a motion and a second for suspension of the rules. All in favor, please let me know by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Excellent. Thank you for that. We'll see that that's passed out this evening with the council's vote. And uh, with that, I believe that's all we have. Mr. Chair, Councilman okay. Fusco has his hand raised here in chambers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Councilman Fusco. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I uh, would like to respectfully request that the uh, committee uh, consider and pass the item that's on the regular agenda. This is uh, reference the uh, uh, formation of a committee that would study issue 56. I'm sorry, Section 56 um, that uh, uh, President Somerville had uh, and I had sponsored, and uh, we asked for that to be passed. Okay, I apologize. I just I skipped right over old business. And that falls on me. All right, uh, let's have some conversation about that. Any uh, any comments or questions from committee members? This has been on our agenda for uh, several weeks now, so do we have a favorable report on uh, this item under old business? Mr. Chair, so, Council um, Mr. Chair Councilman well, Malik has his... Say again? Yes, Mr. Councilman Malik has his hand raised here in chambers. Okay, Councilman Malik. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I know it's been some time since we had this discussion. Uh, it feels like years ago. Um, but ultimately, uh, I know, you know, I did not support the inclusion of Section 56 in the budget. Uh, but I do agree that, you know, we all need to come to some kind of consensus around the future uh, process by which these contracts have been uh, entered into. Um, I, you know, I think we've reviewed several of them today and in previous weeks, and I think that there's been a benefit to that, but you know, I look forward to participating in discussions, so uh, we'll vote to move this out of committee and you know, go through that this evening. All right, and so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, hey, all those in favor of uh, presenting this item, passing this item out this evening from the committee, please let me know by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, again, uh, pardon to uh, Councilman Fusco, Councilwoman Somerville. I did overlook old business. My apologies. And Thank with you. that, I do not believe we have anything else coming before us. And we will adjourn at 3 53 p.m. Thank you. That is the final committee meeting of the day. Council will meet at 7 p.m. tonight. Thank you.